Hello everybody and welcome to our first Habitats and Adaptations video filmed on location right here at Five Sisters Zoo. My name's Adam and I am delighted to be bringing these home learning videos and activity sheets as well to you guys whilst you're all learning at home uh, during this next few weeks. And as I've already said, the first video we are going to be focusing on habitats and adaptations. So today and then later this week, we're going to be focusing on the habitats that animals and plants are, are found living in and um, how they've adapted to survive there because there are a whole range of different habitats across the globe and some of them are really, really harsh and it makes it quite problematic for a lot of species that are trying to survive there. So we've got deserts, hot deserts um, like the Sahara Desert in Northern Africa hot and dry. We've got tundra up in the Arctic Circle where it's cold and dry. We've got tropical rainforests where it's absolutely teeming with life, but everything's competing with, all the species are competing with each other. Um, we've got aquatic habitats, so we can't forget aquatic habitats, of course. We've got things like rivers and burns, like the one that is behind me here just now, um, that are also brimming with life. And what we're going to be doing in these sessions is we're going to be discussing the kinds of the kinds of species that we find living in these different habitats and how they've adapted to survive there. And next week, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on rainforests. So one habitat I'm going to leave out from the habitats and adaptations classes will actually be rainforest. We'll focus on, on that in a little bit more depth in some of our later classes. Today, we've brought you down to our snow leopard habitat. We're going to be having a bit of a discussion about our snow leopards, about where we find them living normally and uh, about how they survive there as well and, and some of the threats to their survival in those places as well. And, and that's really important for us to consider so that we can, we can conserve the species moving forward in an appropriate manner. And that's a really, really important thing for us to do and for you guys at home to be really excited about as well, because it will take absolutely everybody out there to make sure that animal conservation and plant conservation, habitat conservation as well, is as successful as it possibly can be. Now, throughout all of our home learning videos, we are also going to be, uh, you know, delivering a, a little feel-good story from Five Sisters Zoo. So either some of the conservation work that we're involved in, or some of the animal rescue work that we're involved in as well. And the the kind of feel-good story will fit in with the topic that we are discussing. So as I said, this week is all about habitats and adaptations, and we're starting off here with our snow leopards. So guys, we've actually been allowed into the, the snow leopard indoor dens today, which is, well, I'm certainly very excited about this. I don't get in here very often. And we are joined by Nella and Aruna. So we've got Nella just down here, and to my right hand side. I'm staying well away from the fence here just now. Um, now obviously we're talking about habitats and adaptations today. And these guys, they live in those mountainous areas over in Central Asia. Um, and you can see from Nella there just now, she is perfectly adapted to live in those cold, harsh, rocky, mountainous regions. She's got that lovely thick fur that keeps her really well insulated. You can see she's actually got quite small ears at the top of her head there. Now, animals with small ears lose less heat through them, so it makes total sense that her ears are that size. She doesn't want big ears that she's going to lose lots of heat through. She's got a really nice big long tail, which helps for balance when they're moving around up steep slopes but they'll also wrap that tail round themselves, a little bit like a scarf as well, for some extra warmth. Now, I'm not sure if we can see her feet there just now, but they're really, really furry. The, th the fur on their feet is really, really thick, and those feet act a little bit like snowshoes when they're moving around in the kind of cold, icy, snowy conditions up on the top of those mountains. Now, our head keeper, Gary, is currently in, well, he's, just out, outside there just now, I think he's doing some work in the, in the main enclosure. Um, so these girls are a little bit curious as to what's, uh, what's going on at the moment. And um, he's going to be coming in here in a few minutes time to do some training. So we're going to be able to, to show you a little clip of Gary doing some training. And then we will ask him exactly why he's doing that and, and what he's doing as well. Um, so that should be really exciting to see too. Thank you. 
Excellent, Gary. So we have just seen you training Nella and Aruna inside. Uh, we, we obviously we got a short film of you training Nella there. Can you just explain to us why you were training them? Why is that so important? What what were you doing? So I mean, training is um, part of the daily husbandry, um, and we were doing target training there. So basically, that allows us to get up nice and close with Nella. Um, we can perform routine health checks um, of things like paws, claws, and teeth. Um, not only that, it also establishes a bond between myself and the cat, um, which in turn will reduce sort of stress, anxiety, um, and um, it also allows us to, to maybe identify any future problems that might come up. Um, so it um, lets us treat them nice and early. Brilliant. And in a second or two, we're really fortunate because Gary is going to allow us uh, to go into the, the snow leopard habitat and have a little look at the, the inside of the enclosure. Can you just tell us, Gary, how good is this snow leopard habitat that we've got here? How sort of realistic is it? So, I mean, it's um, very similar to what we'd have in the wild. Um, it allows them to, to camouflage them in the backdrop. Um, and it also allows us to sort of um, put their food out in a way that encourages them to use natural behaviours like um, moving through these sort of really rocky, steep hills. Um, so yeah, it's, it's almost identical to what they would be coming from in the wild. Brilliant. So we are going to go inside now and we're going to check out what it looks like in there. So you can see that in the enclosure here, we've tried to recreate those mountainous areas over in Central Asia where snow leopards would normally be found living. There's lots of rocks in here, lots of boulders for them to kind of move around in amongst. We've also got these nice caves for them to shelter in too. And that's really, really important. Remember, a few minutes ago when we were having a little look at the, the true leopards indoors, we were talking a little bit how they've, about how they've adapted physically to live in these kinds of very harsh environments. They've got those huge, big, long tails that are really crucial for balance when they're moving up and down these steep slopes. They also use those tails to help them keep nice and warm as well. Now, they've also got those kind of snowshoes almost for feet, those really kind of furry feet that allow them to, to move around in those cold, snowy, icy conditions with ease. And it is absolutely incredible just how well camouflaged these guys are in a habitat like this one. So if anybody at home has been along to Five Sisters Zoo before, you'll know just how hard it is to spot Nella and Aruna when they're out and about in this habitat. Those spots on their, on their kind of furry coat, um, the colours just allows them to blend in so, so easily. And one of the, the best ways of actually working out what's going on with snow leopards out in the wild, scientists tend to use something called a camera trap. And I've brought one along with me here just now. So this is an example of a camera trap that would possibly be set up in those mountainous areas over in Central Asia. And these are triggered when a snow leopard or any other animal walks past, a photograph would be taken. And that's how scientists are able to tell where snow leopards are still living and where um, you know they're now absent. And unfortunately, snow leopard habitat is currently shrinking. So right now, Nella and Aruna, they belong to a species that is considered vulnerable to extinction, unfortunately. And global climate change has a huge part to play in that. Um, and I'm sure you guys have spoken a lot about global climate change at school. Certainly over the last couple of years, it's really been pushed to the forefront, which is an excellent thing. It really has to be at the forefront of all our minds. And unfortunately, snow leopards have been really impacted by this. So rising global temperatures actually causes more snow flurries to occur high up in the mountains where snow leopards are found living and snow leopards as the name suggests they like it cold but they don't want to be living in too much snow so those huge flurries of snow are pushing individuals further down the mountains now that doesn't sound like a huge problem does it but there's another kind of leopard the common leopard that's living in the forests further down those mountains and unfortunately those snow flurries pushing snow leopards down it means that they are meeting common leopards and over the last few years camera traps that have been set up in those mountainous areas have actually the, the same camera trap has caught both snow leopards and common leopards um, at different times but on the same on the same camera trap which is quite a unique thing to see and quite a worrying thing to see as well because they are coming um, more and more into contact with each other which means they're in competition with each other which could be quite detrimental for snow leopards now Another reason that those two species are meeting, those global temperatures, those rising temperatures, not only does it cause more snow flurries at the top of the mountains, it also allows trees to grow higher up in the mountains, 
common leopards love living in forested areas. Remember, snow leopards, they prefer these lovely kind of open rocky areas instead. And those open rocky places are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller as forests start to work their way up the hills, up those mountains. Now, snow leopards are carnivores. They like to eat meat, yeah? And they're going to eat things called different play, prey items, things like blue sheep. They're not actually blue. Um, you guys at home, go away and look up blue sheep. They are really cool. They'll eat ibex. They'll eat pika, which are small marmot-like animals. And their prey, with those rising global temperatures, are also coming further down the mountains. So snow leopards are following them because they have to eat. So they are coming further down to look for food as well. So global climate change is a real concern for snow leopards and for humans as well. So I totally advise you guys to, to be you know looking into what you can do at home, even if we all just did a little bit, um, you know, every day walking instead of driving, um, making sure that we're checking out where our food's coming from and that we're not flying it from the other side of the earth all the time, you know, reducing emissions, helping to, to you know, combat global climate change is a huge thing, not just for us, but for species like snow leopards and individuals like Nella and Aruna who are living out there in those mountainous areas in Asia. Yeah? Now, while we're in here, we'll kind of move along this way a little bit because imagine you're a snow leopard living in these rocky areas and you're hunting things like those blue sheep, those ibex, those pika, you're going to have to be pretty agile. And snow leopards have adapted to be able to hunt in these really steep, rocky areas. And they are incredible at running and jumping in these really quite tricky locations. And believe it or not, snow leopards have been seen jumping over 40 feet, leaping 40 feet through the air in order to catch their prey. Now, to put that into context, I am going to get uh, the assistance of Gary, our head carnivore keeper, and we're going to show you just how far that really is. So guys, as I've already mentioned, snow leopards can jump an incredible distance. They can launch themselves up to 40 feet in some cases through the air in order to catch their prey, which is absolutely incredible. To show you just what a feat that really is, uh, we've got Gary with us again and we've got our measuring tape. So we are going to show you guys just how far I can jump in comparison to those snow leopards. So, Gary, if you want to run out that way just now. Fantastic. So, this is us at 20 feet, okay? So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to run and I'm going to jump as far as I can, okay? And remember, snow leopards can jump double this distance that we've got measured out here just now. I just can't find a measuring tape big enough to actually show you that distance in reality. So if you give me two seconds, I'm going to give my biggest jump. I'm going to leap as far as I can. We're going to see how I compare to a snow leopard. So I think I got maybe about six or seven feet there, which really in comparison to those snow leopards that we've been having a little look at, that's not fantastic at all. So you guys at home, one of the activities that we've got on your activity sheet is actually to try this out. Grab a measuring tape and see how you compare to a snow leopard. So guys, to finish our first habitats and adaptation session off today, we've come from the mountains of Central Asia to the forests of Europe. And we're not going to be seeing many animals out and about here, certainly not at this time of the year. Now behind me is our European brown bear enclosure. I mentioned at the start of this video that we were going to be talking a little bit about some feel-good Five Sisters Zoo stories throughout these classes that would be linked to the topics um, that we're, we're covering. And at the start of our next session, I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit about how adaptations, they're not just physical, Behaviour can be adapted to, to survive in an environment, in a habitat as well. And we're going to be focusing at the start of our next session on how bears survive the winter up here in Europe. But I just want to tell you guys a little bit about our bears just now to finish off today. 
We have one bear here at the moment, her name is Esso, but since 2012 we have helped to rescue five European brown bears. All of the bears kept here at Five Sisters Zoo, they have all been rescue cases. So three of the bears that we've helped to rescue have arrived to us from a circus environment and two of them were being kept in a sort of roadside um, restaurant as a roadside attraction over in Eastern Europe. So they were rescued and they were brought over here where they were housed. Now unfortunately we do just have the one bear at the moment, Esso, but bears can live pretty solitary lives so it's not a problem her being in there by herself. And I'm going to tell you guys on Thursday a little bit about why we might not see much of Esso at this time of the year. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's session. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And hopefully you'll all be back on Thursday. Thank you.